हेलो व्यूअर्स आई एम मिस्टर दिलीप कुमार पाल स्टैंड बिफोर यू विथ ए वीडियो ऑन द टॉपिक डेमोक्रेटिक डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन एप्रोचेस एंड डायमेंशंस एप्रोचेस एंड डायमेंशंस ऑफ डेमोक्रेटिक डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन is found in plus 3 second semester general elective paper the name of the paper is governance issues and challenges but before i start my video on democratic decentralization approaches and dimensions or types i want to inform my viewers that my channel name is at the rate dilip kumar pal 9375 remember at the rate dilip kumar pal 9375 if you will search this channel in google you will find more than 460 videos in this channel relating to plus 2 first year political science to plus 2 second year political science Plus three, first semester political science honors to plus three, sixth semester political science honors. Then many videos on environmental studies of plus three, first semester, and ethics and values paper of plus three, second semester, and some videos on general elective paper of plus three, second semester. The name of the paper is governance. issues and challenges i request my viewers that if you have subscribed my channel definitely you will get benefit if you have not subscribed my channel subscribe my channel if you have not subscribed my channel please subscribe for your benefit and those of your friends who are in above classes award them about this channel so at least some students will be benefited to give help to anybody do not consider a minus work a minor work to give help to anybody is a great humanitarian work and i want to inform my viewers that any video you want just write my name dilip kumar pal in youtube and the name of the topic you will get both odia and english video If you will get English video, be sure that its Odia version is also available in YouTube. If you will get Odia video, be sure that its English version is also available in YouTube. So, let us start. Democratic decentralization. We have already discussed in the previous video meaning and meaning of meaning and evolution of democratic decentralization. But today we'll take up. approaches and dimensions of democratic decentralization what are the approaches of democratic decentralization and what are the dimensions or types of democratic decentralization let us start approaches of democratic decentralization approaches means methods of study of democratic decentralization let us start democratic decentralization is an innovation of later part of 20th century and today is a mean of development accepted by all nations may be developed or developing or underdeveloped democratic decentralization is a great innovation of the later part of 20th century and is considered today as a medium of development of all nations may be developed or developing or underdeveloped democratic decentralization means participation of people in all governments national state and local in the field of decision making policy framing and policy implementation democratic decentralization means participation of people in all governments 
may be of national, state or local in the field of policy making, policy implementation and decision making. In brief, participation of people in administration of all level, national, state and local is democratic decentralization. So democratic decentralization means participation of people in all levels national state or local is democratic decentralization or in brief democratic decentralization means participation of people in administration is democratic decentralization so we are clear when democratic decentralization has come up in the later part of 20th century and we are clear what it means that it is the participation of people in government of all levels maybe national state or local now discuss what are the approaches of democratic decentralization number one doctrinal approach doctrinal approach means it is an approach which regards democratic decentralization as an end in itself instead of treating it as a mean to achieve organizational efficiency and effectiveness doctrinal approach of democratic decentralization speaks that democratic decentralization is an end in itself it is not a medium to achieve organizational effectiveness and organizational efficiency it gives stress on empowerment of local community like city town and village the essence of this approach is people empowerment by granting them decision making and functional authority so doctrinal approach of democratic decentralization speaks that democratic decentralization is an end in itself it is only an ideology it does not consider that democratic decentralization is a medium to achieve organizational efficiency and effectiveness. Doctrinal approach regards democratic decentralization as only an ideology. It is an end in itself. It gives stress to people's empowerment, local people empowerment. It gives stress on empowerment of local community like city, town and village. The essence of this approach is people empowerment by granting them by granting them decision making and functional authority. So doctrinal approach is an approach which speaks that democratic decentralization is an end. It is only a doctrine. It is not an end to achieve organizational efficiency and effectiveness. It gives stress to Local people empowerment, maybe of city, state, city, town or village. Number two, political approach. It speaks that there must be political will and commitment to decentralized power. Otherwise, it will remain only in law and not in practice. It is known as illusory decentralization for example in india although decentralization of power to local body have been granted formally but these bodies are not given funds functions functionaries essential to operate as an autonomous institution political approach of democratic decentralization is an approach which speaks that there must be a will there must be a determination, there must be a commitment to delegate power to local bodies. If there will be no commitment, there will be no interest, there will be no determination to transfer power from central authority to local authorities, then democratic decentralization will be meaningless. It will be considered as illusory De decentralization. So, political approach of democratic decentralization speaks that there must be a will, there must be an interest, there must be a desire to decentralize power to local bodies. 
otherwise it will be meaningless for an example in india there is a transfer of power there have been transfer of power to local bodies but local body do not have power local body do not have fund local body do not have functionaries to work so it is known as political approach number 3 administrative approach of democratic decentralization it speaks that from time to time readjustment must be made in administration it means when administrative unit will be created due to decentralization there will be confusion in different administrative areas about that area and power so administrative approach speaks that whenever there will be democratic decentralization or transfer of power to local body some new institutions will come previously there were so previously there were some institutions but by democratic decentralization some new institutions will come so there will be confusion there about the area of power so at that time that problem will have to be solved otherwise democratic decentralization will create problem so administrative approach speaks that from time to time readjustment must be made in administration it means when administrative units will be created due to decentralization there will be there will be confusion in different administrative area about their area and power for example when local governments will be created in for example when local governments were created in rural and urban area there will be confusion of power between these administrative units and district administration so to resolve this problem conscious attempts are needed to readjust from time to time conflicting claims of area and functions in decentralized field administration so administrative approach speaks that whenever there will be decentralization democratic decentralization some new institutions will be created but previously there were some institutions like district administration so when there will be decentralization of power along with the district administration some new administrative unit will come up for example in rural area gram panchayat jila parishad panchayat samiti in urban area corporation municipality and uh, notary notary council so whenever there will be democratic decentralization some new local institutions will be found so previously there were district administration but after democratic decentralization some new local bodies will be found so there will be confusion among them about their area of authority so that confusion must be solved by conscious efforts it is known as the administrative approach of democratic decentralization then dual role approach this approach points out conflict between tradition and change the basic conflict according to fessler is between traditional function of maintenance of law and order and advancement of socio economic development which is the demand of welfare state so the conflict between tradition and change must be solved so dual role approach speaks that whenever there will be democratic decentralization so dual role approach speaks that whenever there will be democratic decentralization then in addition to the traditional function of the government some new functions will have to be added the traditional function of the government the traditional function of the government is maintenance of law and order and to collect revenue but this is the traditional function what about the democratic decentralization along with the traditional function of the government 
सोशियो इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट हुज इज द डिमांड ऑफ वेलफेयर स्टेट मस्ट बी कैरिड आउट सो एलोंग विथ द ट्रेडिशनल फंक्शन गवर्नमेंट विल हैव टू कैरी आउट सम सोशियो इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट सो dual role approach so dual role approach speaks that that the conflict between tradition and change must be solved so whenever there will be democratic decentralization along with the traditional function of the state and government some socio economic development socio economic function the state will have to carry out so along with the traditional function of the state some new socio economic development which is the demand of welfare state will have to be carried out so that conflict must be solved so we have discussed four approaches of democratic decentralization like doctrinal approach political approach administrative approach and dual dual role approach now discuss dimensions of democratic decentralization or types of democratic decentralization there are, there are five types democratic decentralization are five types number one administrative democratic decentralization what is administrative democratic decentralization it means decentralization of authority to lower officials in the administrative hierarchy of organizations it means decentralization of power and function to subordinate units relating to policy formulation its implementation along with responsible power so administrative democratic decentralization means there will be transfer of power from higher bodies to the lower bodies in the hierarchical systems so administrative democratic decentralization means whenever there will be transfer of power or decentralization of power from higher bodies to lower bodies like central to state and from central to central to state and from state to district it is known as the administrative democratic decentralization so administrative democratic decentralization means whenever there will be transfer of power from higher body of the hierarchical system to the lower body of the hierarchical system it is known as administrative democratic decentralization number 2 functional democratic decentralization it means specialized functions are decentralized to specialist units or departments like health and education to local bodies for better discharge of functions functional democratic decentralization functional democratic decentralization means whenever there will be transfer of power from a specific department to another specific department in the lower level it is known as the functional democratic decentralization it means if the health department of center will transfer or will give some power to the health department of state or the health department of state will give some power to the health department of district administration it is known as the functional democratic decentralization number 3 political democratic decentralization it means decentralization of political power in higher level political organs to lower level political organs it means transferring power and responsibility from higher level elective body to lower level elective body so political democratic political democratic decentralization means whenever there will be transfer of power from higher level elective body to lower level elective body it is known as the political democratic decentralization it means whenever there will be transfer of power from the higher level elective body like parliament to a lower level elective body like state legislature or from state legislature which is the elective body to lower level maybe jilla parishad panchayat samiti or gram panchayat in the rural level or corporation municipality and notary council in the urban area it is known as the political 
डेमोक्रेटिक डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन देन जियोग्राफिकल डेमोक्रेटिक डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन इट मीन्स पावर एंड फंक्शन ऑफ द हेडक्वार्टर आर ट्रांसफर टू द फील्ड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्टेट एंड हुई आर फर्दर डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन टू फील्ड ऑफिसेस इन रीजन एंड डिस्ट्रेबल जियोग्राफिकल डेमोक्रेटिक डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन मीन्स वेन एवर दर विल बी ट्रांसफर ऑफ पावर फ्रॉम द हेडक्वार्टर टू द फील्ड यूनिट्स एंड फ्रॉम द फील्ड टू सब फील्ड इट इज नोन इज द जियोग्राफिकल डेमोक्रेटिक डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन फाइनली फाइनेंशियल डेमोक्रेटिक डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन इट मीन्स डिसेंट्रलाइज इट मीन्स डिसेंट्रलाइज फाइनेंशियल पावर रिलेटिंग टू टेक्सेशन फंड एंड एक्सपेंडिचर टू लोअर बॉडी टू इंप्रूव देयर फाइनेंशियल पावर टू सॉल्व लोकल प्रॉब्लम by this local bodies in rural area and urban area plan to solve local problems without depending on from center and state so financial democratic decentralization means whenever financial power relating to taxation fund and expenditure will be transferred from a higher body to a lower body and from the lower body again to sub lower level it is known as the financial democratic decentralization okay viewers we have discussed today democratic decentralization approaches and dimensions this is the part part 2 video related to democratic decentralization in part 1 we have discussed meaning and evolution of democratic decentralization so i have full confidence that plus 3 second semester general elective students will be benefited by this video i request them to intimate to your friends of this paper so that some students will be benefited thank you have a good day